Hi guys, welcome back. Wanted to put together a really brief video about section 2.4 complex numbers from our pre-calc class. And as stated right here, the basics that you have to remember is that anytime you take the square root of a negative 1, you're going to have an i, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So some basic things that you need to know if, if I have the square root of negative 4, we're going to pull that negative 1 out so that negative 1 right there, the square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of 4 is plus or minus 2. So therefore, your answer is plus or minus 2i. That's how you would do that to pull out that negative. And then you just reduce a radical the same way you be did back in Algebra 2 and Algebra 1. Standard form of a complex number is a plus or minus bi. So usually you'll see some parentheses around it too, like we'll do here in the next couple uh, examples. Um, but if I just have something like 3 plus 7i, the 3 is the real part, and the 7i is your imaginary part. So just recognizing the parts, because you're going to just be combining like terms here when we talk uh, about some addition and subtraction examples. So looking at those right here, uh, I've got some operations here. We just have basically 3 plus 5i, that complex number, and we're adding negative 6 plus 4i, that complex number. So all you have to do is combine the like parts. So the 3 and the negative 6, those are your real parts. Okay, so 3 and negative 6 is going to be negative 3, and then 5i and 4i, that's plus 9i. So there's your answer just for adding complex numbers there. Now over here we have a subtraction, so we just have to t take into consideration the negative and that it's going to change signs here. So 2 minus 6, so the real part is going to be minus 4, and then negative 4 minus a negative 5, so you know that that's going to turn into a plus. So negative 4i plus 5i is just going to be a positive 1i. So a lot of that is just combining like terms and it doesn't get any more complicated than that. So that's addition and subtraction. Now let's move on and talk about multiplication. Well, multiplication is just actually foiling. And everything that comes up in this one, you're going to have to remember that i squared is going to be negative 1 because that's going to come up a lot when we foil. So if I even draw my lines right here, so I know that 3 times 4 is going to be 12 for the first. And then outer, negative 7i and 3 is negative 21i. Your inner is going to be 4 times 2i, which is just going to be a positive 8i. And then last, 2 and negative 7 multiplied. Now that right there is where you have to remember this one. So the 2 and the negative 7, that's going to be negative 14. And then you're going to have i squared. So right here, that i squared you know is a negative 1. So that's going to turn this into a positive 14. And then you just got to make sure that you combine all of your like terms. So first off, the 12 and the 14, that's going to give you 26. And then negative 21 and the 8 for the i terms, is that's going to be a negative 13i. So that's how you do a multiplication. You still do the first outer and the last. And a lot of times when you multiply the last terms, you're going to get the i squared. And just remember that i squared is negative 1. Now I actually have a special multiplication over here. You have 3 plus 2i and 3 minus 2i. These are known as complex conjugates. Okay. Now, very similar to what you did in Algebra 1 with difference of squares. You will see that when you do your FOIL, we're going to have 9 and then minus 6i and then plus 6i and then a minus 4i squared. Just like you did when you did FOIL back in Algebra 1, those middle terms with conjugates are going to cancel out. And then we remember again here, negative 4i squared is going to turn into a plus 4. So therefore, we're just going to have 9 and 4 which is 13. Anytime you multiply conjugates or complex conjugates, your answer is always going to be a real number. There's not going to be any i's left over in our answer when we multiply conjugates. 
So that's how you do multiplication. So the last operation we want to look at is division. And the reason I brought up the conjugates is because when we divide by complex conjugates, or we, we divide complex numbers, we're going to have to multiply the top and bottom by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 4 plus 3i. And we know that on the bottom, we're going to wind up with a real answer. So if I just do the bottom real quick, I know I'm going to have 16 minus 9i squared. Again, I didn't do the middle because I know they're going to cancel out with the minus 12i and plus 12i. So I'll go back here and do the top and do the foil here. So I know I'm going to have 8 and then 2 and 3i. That's going to be 6i. 5i and 4, that's going to be 20i. Nope, jumped up a little bit there. And then last but not least here, I'm going to have the 5i and 3i, and that's going to be a plus 15i squared. Now, simplifying this, this is going to be 16 plus 9, so that's going to give me 25 on the bottom. And then simplifying this, that's going to be a negative 15, so negative 15 and 8 is going to be a negative 7. So I know I'm going to have a negative 7, and then how many i's do I have here in the middle? I'm going to have a 26 I. Now, we want to leave our answer in standard form where we have a real part, plus or minus, an imaginary part. So what we do here is a little thing we like to call pretzeling. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the negative 7 over 25 and write that as an answer. There's our real part. And then I have a 26 over 25i. So I got plus 26 over 25i. And there's your real part. There's it written as a plus or minus the bi part. And you need to reduce any of the fractions if they do. In our case, they don't. So that's a quick, quick video of how to do simple operations with complex numbers. So I hope that helps.